right? We've got these lows down at uh, 247, 70-ish, 248. Crazy ass bounce here on Friday. But the beauty of focusing on these lows, guys, is that if the market dumps again, we know it's taken Apple with it. We know it's taken Netflix with it. We know it's taken NVIDIA with it. You know, we know how this game works at this point. So these lows could offer the opportunity, guys, for either a great target or great potential entries. Regardless of how you want to use those levels, they should play some kind of role you know, in your preparation and your execution this week. So with Apple's lows being, at, let's call it 248, you know, in this environment, guys, and you know, during this prep here, you know, we're going to kind of start throwing in the topic of you know, risk management. When we're faced with the environment that we're faced in right now, where you know, when we gap down, we're gapping down three, four, five, six, seven percent. When we get a pop, it looks a lot like Friday, where we pop five, six, seven percent. So what we've got to understand right now about the market, guys, and this has to go into risk management, it has to go into expectations, into thought processes, we're in a huge range right now, right? We are seeing average true ranges, for example, on Apple. Apple's got an ATR right now, guys, of 16 bucks, and we're making double the average move on some days. When the market itself, and as a result, the names that we like to focus on are making such aggressive moves. I mean, look at the candles here for Apple. When the daily price action, guys, is to the tune of a, you know, a few hundred bucks up or down for the market, we have to understand the impact that that's going to have on the options market, right? Calls and puts, as quick as they're going to gain value, they're getting absolutely destroyed when the market moves in the opposite direction. You know, if you buy puts and the next morning or that given day happens to be the day that we bounce, like I said, we're not bouncing a quarter percent, a half a percent, four, five, six, seven percent. If you've traded options for a few weeks, at this point you already know the market or the stock goes against you five, six, seven percent, your puts ain't gonna hold up. It's the same risk guys associated with jumping into calls right now. If the market rolls against you, it's to the tune of a couple hundred points. The calls you're jumping into, as much as they might gain value, as good as things might look, We've seen every single morning in the live stream, very little irrelevant minimal drops are tearing calls in half. We're seeing weekly calls guys losing 50% of their value on like tiny little dips. Nothing that in a normal environment would have any kind of impact, but when volatility is where it is, this is what the options market is giving us. So you can ignore that and you can pay the consequences or you can adjust the game plan, adjust the mindset, adjust the risk management to most importantly survive, but also give yourself guys a chance, you know, at making a little bit of progress here. So with all that being said, one mindset I think really is really important right now, guys, and I'm seeing way too many in the chat room doing the complete opposite, is that you've got to have the mindset and the acceptance that any position you put on, especially for those of you guys trading directionally, so you're buying calls, you're buying puts, your mindset and your acceptance right before you enter that position has to be this position could go to zero. It's just the environment we're in right now, guys. And if you are going to hold something overnight, you have to accept that if this trade doesn't work, it's not going to be a 20% loss, probably not going to be a 30% loss. You have to have the mindset that these things are going to zero. Now, developing that mindset right now and kind of, you know, keeping that thought process, it's going to keep you out of trouble, guys. And when it comes to that thought process, right, accepting that a position could go to zero, as that relates to risk management, what we want to make sure is that because we understand a position can easily go to zero, that position, guys, can't have a huge impact on our overall account. So especially in this environment, any other environment, but especially in this one, this is the big picture thought process you guys got to develop right now. With the acceptance and just, right, Got to respect the market. It is what it is. If you're going to be the guy or the girl looking to day trade, looking to hold things overnight, we have to have the mindset that it could go to zero. Now, the importance of that, guys, right, is when you accept that, now the next step is to make sure that if that happens, you can't kill yourself, right? We don't want one negative trade. We don't want, in this environment especially, because the chances of something going against you big time are very high. We can't be putting ourselves in a position, guys, where that one trade going against us is going to wipe us out of the game. 
right? And talking to people on the phone, through text messages, through DMs and emails this week, 10 to 15 of you that I've been talking to, you're putting yourself in this position. Say guys, you got a $500 account, all right? So this green circle represents your $500 account. The environment we're in can easily take a position to zero. So if you then go jump into say an Apple call or an Apple put, right, either way, you jump into an Apple option with say $400, right? You buy $400 worth of calls. Now in any other environment, that's still pretty shitty risk management. But in this environment, guys, where if it's wrong, right, let's assume it's gonna go to zero. If you're rocking with 500 bucks and you go 400 deep into Apple, you're thinking about what's gonna happen if that trade works. You're thinking if this trade works because of how crazy things are moving, I might make 100, I might make 200%. My $400 might make me 400 to 800 bucks, right? That would take my account to almost 1,000 bucks to 1,000 plus. We tend to kind of, you know, guys, tune out and ignore the risk associated with that. Now, on the surface, it should be obvious, but, you know, when the lights are on and the session is going, this is what happens to us. We kind of, you know, get a little bit delusional when we lose sight of reality. So, guys, in a market, where we have to assume a position can easily go to zero to have a $500 account and to put $400 of that into one given trade, it goes against you, right? It's basically game over for you. That one position is going to take you out of the game completely. And I know this should be common sense, right? But there's a lack of common sense when money is involved and we're trying to make money. And unfortunately, I'm seeing a lot of this, right? Putting 50, 60, 70% of the account into one given trade. Because all we're seeing, guys, on Instagram is the examples of when this shit is working, right? But nobody who's blowing their accounts is sharing their stories right now. So we got to have this mindset. A position can go to zero. And our golden rules have to be one trade can't wipe us out. And we don't want to wipe away, guys, a bunch of forward progress. So when you look at something like Apple this week, right, with that mindset, now you can decide whether or not you can trade this thing. If you've got a $500 account, right, you don't want to be looking to buy any of these puts. If you've got a $500 account, you shouldn't be jumping into a $245, right? You're going to pay $2 and change. Guys, we got to assume it goes to zero. Right? If you're looking for an Apple bounce, you can't go jumping into these calls. You've got to assume it goes to zero. And what we're seeing right now because of the volatility, guys, is expensive options. You know, I'm going to guess for probably 90, 95% of our group, right, for you guys, Tesla's off limits right now, right? If you're looking for a short in Tesla, you're talking all the way out to 390. You got 300 bucks at premium. Again, you got a $500 account. That's more than half of your account. So we need to keep these things in mind right now. But with this being said, guys, what is interesting about this environment is that because of the size of the moves, right, and because of the magnitude of the moves, this is one of those environments where you can get outsized returns and outsized gains with small position sizes. You know, typically in a normal environment, let's look at something like Apple, right? If we're just in our typical day-to-day -day market, you're probably not going to have much luck buying these 230 puts, right? And making any kind of serious headway. But our current environment is different. Right? It would not be out of the ordinary. It would not be insane for Apple to hit 240, 235 this week. So that's what's very interesting about this environment. You know, I took a trade like this, guys, this week on Roku. Right? Or I bought 80 puts on Roku, 80 strikes way out the money, right? But we're in the kind of environment where you're getting a gap down like this. This is the kind of environment, guys, where if you use smart risk management, you position size to the standpoint where if this thing goes to zero, it's kind of irrelevant for me, you can actually get some outsized returns. You know, so the 200 bucks I put into those 80 strike puts, as it relates to my account as a whole, right? The big picture of my account if the position went to zero, it's not a big deal, right? It's not a big deal because one guy is at 200 bucks doesn't represent any kind of meaningful piece of my account. So that's goal number one, right? 
one trade going against you can't take you out of the game. So that Roku, you know, 200 bucks into the puts, if it went to zero, whatever, right? They're way out the money. They were, I mean, you know, we closed right around 90. You know, those puts guys were 10 bucks out the money. You know, they were deep down there in the chain out the money. But if the position ate the dust, it wouldn't have affected my whole account. So I'm already, you know, guaranteeing that first golden rule. This trade goes against me, which is incredibly easy in this environment. It's not going to kill me. Right. The second goal should be, guys, to protect forward progress. Right. It's no good if you make money Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then on Friday you blow it all. Right. It does you no good if the first three weeks of the month you make four grand and then you blow thirty five hundred in the last week. Right. Along with protecting your initial capital, the whole goal, guys, especially for those of you, you know, really under the pattern day trade rule. We're just trying to stack gains, trying to stack gains, right? Not taking big steps back, not taking huge risks, looking to take massive steps forward. You guys are going to be able to make, you know, the few thousand bucks a week you're hoping to make with ease when you've got 20, 25 grand to play around with, right? Think about it. You've got 25 grand. You can put $2,000 of moderate risk into your go-to trades and you catch yourself a 50% day trade, right? A 30% scalp, a hundred percent swing. It gets much easier to make money, guys. So don't fool yourselves. You know, for those of you working with a thousand bucks, with five thousand bucks, with ten thousand bucks, you know, you're not trying to get wealthy with that account size. You're not trying to, you know, blow that up. Your thought process should be, I'm trying to get to, you know, I'm trying to get to the motherland. I'm trying to get to that point where I got enough capital now where I'm taking modest risk, but it's making me two, three, four, five thousand bucks a week. Too many traders try to make that same money with a few thousand bucks. So again, what does that lead you to? That leads you to having 500 bucks in your account and you go buy $400 worth of Apple calls. It's not going to work out long-term, guys. So along with that first golden rule, one trade ain't going to kill me, right? One trade ain't going to take me out of the game. The other thing working in that favor of the Roku trade was if it went to zero, it had already been paid for. So that position, if it went to zero, not only is it not going to take me out of the game, not only is it not going to have really any kind of meaningful impact on my account, it's not wiping away forward progress. If Roku had gone to zero, I'm still on the green for the week, right? I have still moved the ball forward because I hit one Roku day trade and I locked those gains in, right? Basically, guys, paying for that put position I held overnight. So that one day trade, right? That makes that a free shot. That goes to zero. It's literally irrelevant because I already made the money on the day trade. Right? I also made a few bucks on a Roku call spread. So now, no matter what, if this goes to zero, because of the previous two trades, I'm in the green. So I took a deep out the money put, which in the typical environment would be a very low probability trade, risking $200. Because 200 bucks would not damage my account at all, Right? I wouldn't notice the loss because I'm not going backwards this week because of other trades. And on Roku itself, I'm green on the week no matter what because of the day trade and because of the call spread. Now that position, guys, right? That Roku 200 puts when we gapped down on Thursday, they went up 530%. So that $200 made me a little bit over a thousand bucks. That's awesome, right? That thousand bucks, that's a nice cherry on top. That thousand bucks, you know what? That kind of puts its hand under things for the week and helps move the ball forward just a little bit more. But the problem is, is that that's what you guys are looking for, right? You're thinking about the good in that. You're thinking about the positive outcome. You're thinking about that trade working. That's the danger of this environment is that things are moving five, 10% left and right. If you're on the right side of that, you're going to catch 100, 200, 300% return. You know, I day traded Tesla one day this week, guys. It was about 100% in 30, 45 minutes. It's the environment that we're in where a lot of traders, guys, are going to fall victim to this environment, right? And they're not going to be here. And this is the whole importance, right? Forget what you can accomplish in this environment right now. You want to make sure you're standing tall, mentally ready, emotionally ready, and you got your capital when the bottom comes in. And I'm not saying it's coming soon. I'm not saying this is going to be the bottom. But 
in history, guys, our market bottoms, our market reverses, and our market does get back to brand new all-time highs, right? It will happen again. So the unfortunate thing about sure, right, the opportunity that is available in this environment is that a lot of traders are going to get lost in the sauce. They're going to be seeing these giant moves taking place. And again, guys, that golden rule, a lot of traders are going to wipe themselves out right now by not following that golden rule. Right? They're going to ignore the ugly side of this environment. Right? They're going to ignore that just as easy as that Roku put went up 500%. What if the market bounced on Thursday morning? Like I've mentioned, when we're bouncing, we're freaking bouncing. Four, five, six percent. What's my Roku put going to do? It's going to go to zero as Roku bounces four, five, six percent. So don't see the 500% return, right? Don't see the 200% return and then focus on nothing but that, right? Because a lot of people would like to turn 200 bucks into a thousand. And even though we can do that in the environment, guys, this is what you've got to understand is that if you've got a thousand dollar account, right? And you've got no gains made that week. You've got no other open positions, right? You've done nothing that week to move the ball forward. If that position goes to zero, which is not going to take much, you're down 20%. But again, what are people thinking? I got, I got a thousand bucks. I'm going to put 200 into that trade. If this works, I'm going to make a grand and double my account. So you guys get where I'm coming from. That's the thought process you got to have. No one given trade should take you out of the game. Right? That's a self-inflicted wound. If that happens to you guys, right? You know, when on Friday afternoon, we give up all the gains we made this week, right? On a few bad trades at the end of the month, when we give back all the progress we made, you know, when you guys go from 500 to 1,000 to 1,200 to 2,000 to 3,000, and then back to a thousand. No, that's all self-inflicted pain. There's nobody else, you know, at the desk choosing how many contracts to put in, choosing how much risk to put in. So I want to keep you guys safe in this environment. You are going to see nothing on Instagram and Twitter, but the shit that's working. All, right, all you're going to see is the examples of my Roku trade, where people are making five hundred uh, percent, right, turning two hundred bucks into a thousand dollar profit. Turning a thousand into five thousand, right? Turning twenty grand into a hundred grand. But you guys got to understand the other side of it, right? I got hit with the other side of it yesterday morning. Now let's talk about this trade. I held puts on Tesla into yesterday's open. So I held puts overnight on Thursday, right? And I think overall, guys, right? I had about seven. Let's call it $650 of risk, right? $650 tied up in puts that I held overnight on Tesla. Now, the first golden rule, if I ate the full zero, I lose the full 650, it's not going to be a big deal for my account. One, because relative to the account size, it's not significant, but also guys, right? You got the three Roku trades, money in the bank. You got three SPX spreads from um, Wednesday's expiration, money in the bank. Thursday afternoon, I also day traded Tesla for a $660 profit. So now think about the risk I'm taking overnight, guys, and the reality of it's not actually risk. Right? Forgetting every other trade this week, just as my account stands, I lose the 600 bucks not a big deal. Right? I'm still in the game and I haven't wiped away weeks and months of progress. On top of that, I'm already in the money this week from all these other trades. And then as it goes for Tesla itself, the overnight risk guys was already paid for by that day trade. So now think about this. Now if this Tesla position overnight loses, goes to zero, I lose my full 650 bucks. Well then, that trade already paid for it. So then I'm break even on Tesla, not digging into all the previous gains. One trade doesn't take us out. We protect our capital. We protect forward progress. That's the thought process. At the open, right now, now after hours, Tesla's down at 520. 
right? So now I'm thinking, guys, my 600 bucks is going to make me about 6,000 or so. That would have been a home run, right? That would have been awesome. But the risk associated with even being in a position where that was possible was appropriate for me. And that's the key. Now, what happened here with Tesla? Market gaps before the open, right? I'm thinking I'm waking up to five, six grand. Tesla decides to rally. At the open, guys, those puts were basically at zero, right? I had 530 and 480 strikes. They're basically at zero. So what did I do at the open? I cut them both, right? I lost about 80% of what I could have potentially lost. Now, to me, that was cool, right? Because now I actually get to keep a few bucks from the Tesla day trade. Remember, the Tesla day trade covered all of the risk on the overnight puts. And because I didn't let them go to quite zero, I get to keep a little bit of green from Tesla. We protected the account. We protected forward progress. We slightly moved the ball forward. Now, as it happens, guys, Tesla decides to be an asshole per usual and then just freaking tanks all the way down. At one point, those puts were up to the extent I would have made 6,600 bucks. A few hours later, those puts were at zero. Understand the environment, guys. Right? Understand the significance of this kind of environment. My $600, right? $600 position opens at zero. A few hours later, up 10x. A few hours later, it zero. If you were going to fuck around with position sizes that you can't afford to lose in an environment where a same day expiration option is going to go zero, 10x to zero, you're going to lose your account, guys. It's going to happen, right? It's going to happen. What am I happy about? Whatever, right? Now, if I made the six grand, of course, right? It, it makes for a good day. You get that high for a few hours. But then life moves on, right? It's not a life changer. It's not, you know, uh, you know, financially, the world isn't completely different now. But more importantly, I didn't blow my account. More importantly, I didn't lose forward progress. More importantly, I didn't dig into the, all the Tesla gains I made. More importantly, I didn't wipe away my three SPX trades, my Roku home run, my Roku day trade, my Roku put spread. And also, guys, right, I had an iron condor that hit max loss, right, that I took off from max loss. Why was that iron condor okay? Why was that max loss not a big deal? Because of everything else. So this is a thought process you got to have, right? What we tend to do, right, just picture it. You get some Adderall millennial at the desk, guys, right, and this is it. All he's looking at is Netflix, Ignoring the market, ignoring everything, right? He is going to make everything about this one given trade. Make or break it, right? This is my trade. This is it. You guys are going to trade at your best when you have the absolute, right, opposite mindset. This trade works cool, right? If this trade works, it's just a notch in the right direction, right? You're just trying to grow the account, guys. You're not trying to start here and then one given trade blow it up because that guarantees at some point you're going to blow up the wrong way. So we can't make every one given trade, right? It's so significant to us, but that's what you guys tend to do. And I don't mean you as individuals. I'm just talking out loud to newer traders in general. You got to have that mindset guys, right? Here's your account size. Your next trade works. Cool. Right? Moving the ball forward. Your next trade doesn't work. Okay doesn't really make a big difference. Here's most traders, right? It works. It doesn't work. And guys, who wants to go from 1,000 to 5,000 to 10,000 to 1,000 to 10,000 to 20 to 20 to 5, right? We're trying to grow and sustain. We're trying to build a business here. So in this environment, these are all really important things to keep in mind right now. You have to assume the position's going to go to zero, right? Make that your mindset, guys. And I want you to try something. Give yourself three, four, five weeks. Scale down in position size, right? Almost to the point that you don't really quite give a fuck if the trade works, if the trade goes to zero. You guys are going to find you actually are going to trade better. 
right? All of the problems you guys email me with, all the problems I've had, right? And all the problems that we will continue pretty much to the end of our trading careers, right? Time to time, all the problems we're going to experience, guys, they just get circled back to money. It's all about money, right? Let's think about hesitation, right? Four or five of you talking to me this week about hesitation. What is, the, if you were paper trading, would you hesitate? Right? Well, fuck, I'm taking the trade. Like, well, what's the difference to me? So where's the hesitation stem from? Right? It all comes back to money. Because when we hesitate, you're already fearful of taking the L. Right? Before you've even entered the position, where's your brain? Not on the tape, not on the overall market, not on the setup, not on the important things. I don't know if I want to take this, right? This case going to hurt. This trade doesn't work. This can hurt. It's only going to hurt if you decide to take that size. Again, right? It's a self-inflicted wound. Think about taking profits too early, right? You're focusing on the money. You're so fearful of that position coming against you that you lock gains as soon as you see some green, like three minutes into a trade that's going to go all day long, right? How come you guys get stopped out of moves that an hour later, two hours later, a minute later, turn around and do exactly what you thought it was going to do? Right, imagine you guys looking for a support bounce right here, right? And these little weak ass candles completely shake your ass out. And then Netflix goes on to make a crazy rip. Right? It's probably because you're worried about taking the L. You're so focused on the money because what most traders do, guys, they're focusing on what can I do? How much can I make? How big of a return can I get? They're not thinking about risk management. So until you're trading with position sizes, guys, and again, it's going to take some humbling. A lot of you guys are trying to make 500 bucks a week. So you're trading with too much risk trying to do so, right? Got to play in your current league. You got to play with the firepower that you got, right? Got to stay in your lane. Otherwise, guys, you get taken out of the game. You guys are not going to be free of the emotions, right? That we all experience as traders until you honestly just don't really care whether or not the trade works. I promise you guys, you start trying that, you're going to trade better. If you can trim down your position size to the point where you're like, all right, I just don't care, man, right? Like, it's not going to kill me. I'm not going to be depressed. It's not going to ruin my mood. Like, I'll be good. I'll be back tomorrow. You're going to get into the trades that you planned for without hesitation. You're not going to get shaken out of move so much, right? You're not going to be all antsy to take profits as soon as the trade works, right? All that hesitation, the fear, the greed, all that stuff that's associated with money, you can remove that from the picture, guys. And as far as scaling goes, right, that's really the name of the game as far as position sizing scaling goes. We are slowly building our accounts. And as a result, guys, we can slowly play with more and more size that we don't care about. Right now, there's going to be a point for me in the next few years, guys, where I'll be making 10, 15 grand a week just by default on my spreads. But that's only going to happen if I can comfortably be at the point where I can 10, I can throw 10, 15 grand into a spread and just not give a shit. All right. So what's that going to take? That's going to take that being a relative piece of the capital. You know, guys, if I'm not comfortable putting on that risk, then I've got no shot at making that kind of money. Same goes for all of us. You have to be comfortable with the risk. So in an environment like this, guys, these are things to keep in mind. When you're wrong, expect to be wrong to the tune of zero, right? Just imagine as soon as you put your trade on that that thing could completely disappear. And if you're not 100% okay with that, then right off the bat, right, you're gambling. You're already gambling already got basically no chance of being able to sit through that trade. So while the environment certainly can provide big returns, you got to be going for it, guys, on the size you can afford to lose. And again, you catch a 500% return, you don't need to be 50% of your account deep, 10% of your account deep, guys, right? A couple hundred percent return on a modest piece of your capital is really going to help move the ball forward. So that's the best way to potentially take advantage of what these kind of crazy environments can offer is by accepting the risk guys and just not really giving a shit about it. So something for you guys to think about.
right? Something for you guys to think about. But these are you know, the things I'm focusing on as I'm trying to survive, right? And continue to make headway in this crazy ass environment. One trade will not kill me. I am not going to wipe away forward progress. And you know, we're playing with gains, guys. Right? Why am I comfortable taking the Tesla day trade? Because I banked on three SPX spreads. Right? Why am I uh, comfortable holding the Tesla puts? Well, because I banked the XPX spreads and then I banked the Tesla day trade. So the Tesla day trade pays for the Tesla put risk. And I'm still in the green no matter what because of my SPX trades. Oh, and then I got Roku, right? That kind of thought process right now, guys, right? Chess pieces. How do all these pieces positively or negatively impact your overall account? It's got to be the thought process right now. Make sense, guys? Yeah, let's see what we got in here. Let's see what we got. Da -da -da. Uh, yeah, Billy. So I'm thinking, my man, that uh, that bounce on Friday was just, you know, some algorithm, some short cover, and some bullshit. You know what I mean? So Adrian, to be a hundred percent honest with you, man, as far as like my spread trading goes, right? Um, Personally, I have no experience, um, you know, in the debit spread side of things right now. You know, I only trade credit spreads. But here's what I can tell you, man, right? And just based upon what you're reading right now, it's kind of all what we're experiencing, right? Things are bouncing around right now. <laughs> what I really think in this environment, guys, you know, aside from scalps and aside, you know, from, from taking your shots with positions you can afford to lose, it's tough to it's it's a tough environment to be on a side of a trade where premiums have to work in your favor. Get what I mean by that? You know, we're on SPX on you know Wednesday on Friday. You know, hopefully do it again here on Monday. The reason those trades are working is because premium decay is working in my favor. Right with a credit spread, you're benefiting when options are complete shit. Right? You're benefiting from the fact that we gap up, gap down. There's ridiculous premium that has no right of being there. And then it just kind of completely evaporates as things take a dump. Trades that are on the other side of the fence, right? Where the premiums have to work in your favor and where premium decay can be a negative. It's, it's just the environment we're in. Whether that's a day trade, a debit spread, a, a scalp, a swing. You know, that's a tough part of the battle right now right? Volatility means crazy range for the market. Volatility plus crazy range for the market means options prices are all over the place. Again, guys, Tesla, I buy puts at 650. They open at zero. They go to $66 and then they go to zero, right? And this is all within one good day. That is, you know, that, that is the danger right now is that if your trades rely on premiums working in your favor, right? And premium decay is going to hurt you. You don't get much more premium decay than 66 bucks a contract to zero, you know, into the close. So that would be something I would keep in mind, my friend. Uh, Miss Claudia, happy Saturday to you. Uh, 80%. So are you referring to... Um, what do you think about leaving for the rest of the week? If continues further, is it is almost at max loss? Okay, so you're referring to a you we buy a put, right for a hundred bucks, and you're saying you're down eighty bucks the next morning, right? Is that what you're getting at? And it's a good question. If so, I think I get what you're saying here. And Claudia, right, as I reflect now, um, and again, it is what it is, right? The 6000 bucks wouldn't have been a life changer, um, as awesome as it would have been. In hindsight, wasn't much of a reason for me to take my Tesla puts off, right? Think about it. You're down 80% on a $600 position. 
right? And I was kind of reflecting on this last night that that was probably my biggest error this week, right? Well, why take the, right? I get what you're saying. Why take the position off? What what am I saying? What did I save myself? I saved myself maybe a hundred bucks. Now again, right? As everything relates to my overall account, I already, I already was green for Tesla, right? My Tesla day trade on Thursday completely paid for that risk. So yes, in hindsight, to have closed those puts at 80% didn't really make much sense, right? And you know, that one difference in decision-making, you know, had I kind of said that out loud and been like, hey, there's actually nothing to gain here by closing these, you know, maybe there would have been the chance, you know, I made a few thousand bucks. Again, guys, you know, things move so quick and fast. It's so easy in hindsight to say, um, you know, X, Y, Z would have happened. But that is another thing to keep in mind, guys. Um, so I'm really glad Cla- Claudia brought this up. If you have assumed the risk, if you've accepted the risk and you can afford the risk of a position going to zero, especially right in an environment like this, where again, when things turn, they're turning to the tune of a massive move. There really isn't much reason to take the put off at an 80, 90% loss. So that was definitely, you know, my one kind of mental error this week. Oh uh, yeah, but it is what it is, right? We, we live and we learn. That was a good question though. That was a really good question, uh, Claudia. Uh, Mike, Mike, Mike. So with this Tesla thing, man, right? Sometimes, sometimes it means nothing, but you know, here's a good example is that when I put my Tesla trade on on Thursday, right? Just to give you a different, uh, you know, kind of a sense of the options prices right now. So on Thursday, Tesla was trading, uh, where are we on Thursday, right? Thursday was, um, I think this is Thursday here, right? The 12th, right? So Thursday, Tesla's up here, guys, at, you know, 560. I bought the 530 puts. You know, so those puts I bought, they were 30 points out the money, and I paid $6.50, right? And you know, what I'm observing here about Tesla heading into this week is that for whatever reason, right? Now let's go say, look at something like Apple. Now granted, Apple is, you know, half the size of Tesla, um, you know, dollar per share wise. But we look at, um, you know, Apple's options for next week, guys. And they're a bit more normal, right? Where we start getting out towards these Delta 10s, right? You're starting to go under a dollar a premium. Make sense, right? That's that's pretty normal. With Tesla here, what's very interesting, I remember I told you I just bought, I bought puts on Thursday. Now granted, right, they had four days of premium decay, but just for the sake of conversations here, I bought puts 30 bucks out the money for 650. You know, Tesla closes, guys, let's round up and call it 560. Right, so now uh, 550. So 30 points out of the money would be 520s, the 520s are going for 25 bucks right now. Now, again, when I bought those puts on Thursday, they had already had Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, premium decay going against them. But nonetheless, if we look at Tesla's put chain right here, guys, you know, look how far out the money we're going. And this could adjust on Monday morning, but you know, as it sits into the weekend, you've got a dollar of premium, right? All the way out to 380 to 350, right? The 300's got a dollar premium. These are Delta 5s, right? Delta 6s. The Delta 10s got 450 of premium. Where again, you look at something like an Apple, right? Now, of course, Apple has a smaller range, you know, so all, all of these are things we've got to take into consideration, but the Apple Delta 10s are a dollar. So all I'm just saying is that, you know, through looking at the options chain you know, a few hours this morning, very interesting to me that for whatever reason, the market makers are, uh, no pun intended, putting a premium here on these uh, Tesla puts. So, you know, we'll see. Does that mean Tesla is going to, you know, make a huge move down next week? No, of course, it doesn't mean that. It is just interesting to me that, you know, as we kind of close here on Friday, we've got like ridiculous premiums. You know, guys, last time Tesla's premiums looked like this was on the call side back when it was making this, you know, 
ridiculous moves. And now look at the Delta 10 calls, $2.50 by four bucks. Delta 10 puts, four by 10. So to me, it's just interesting, right? Something to keep an eye on. Sometimes guys, the market makers will price in a move and that can be a bit evident here on the options chain, right? Where again, if the market makers are expecting, you know, some massive move to the downside in Tesla, um, you know, they're not, they're not our buddies. They ain't going to let us get a 470 put, you know, for a dollar. If there's a good likelihood, these things are going to, you know, start going deep into the money. Now, Tesla could rip next week if the overall market rips, but just something to consider, right? You know, 500 did kind of hold up there, you know, into the close um, and on Friday. And even those puts are going for 2000 bucks a pop. So it's interesting, right? You can kind of look around at, you know, different options chains and just get a feel, you know, for, you know, little slight changes in premiums, guys. You know, we look at something like, say, Amazon here. Um, and, you know, and very typical of Amazon, all kinds of premium. Now compare this, right? Amazon is a $1,800 stock. Let's round up. So on an $1,800 stock for next Friday's expirations, your Delta 10s are going for 6 to 10. Now we look at Tesla, which is, um, you know, with some shitty math here, right? Let me see. Uh, I'm going to phone call real quick. Give me uh, one second, guys. All right, I'm going to take this phone call really quick. And those Delta 10s, guys, right, going for 360 to, you know, almost eight bucks. So just something interesting, right? Something to keep in mind. Uh, Jameis, my friend, how many stocks should one watch? My biggest weakness is watching many stocks. You've only got to watch a few, man, right? And I'm going to give you just a real quick, right, one minute travel through time, and you're going to understand why. Right. The only thing, guys, really, right, and there's always going to be new stocks that come onto the market, right, and offer, you know, the Beyond Meats, the, you know, you remember this shit bag? I'm just kidding, right? But there's going to be things like this, guys, on, you know, the Till Rays. There's always going to be these, you know, one hit wonders, right, these phenomenons. But at the end of the day, with the hedge funds, the institutions, the big money of the world, what they buy, guys, and what they live and die in is, is the big, meaty fang stocks. The companies that make up a good portion of the spy and of the cues. And my man, this is the only reason you got to focus on a few names, right? I'm just going to show you this here on a daily chart. S&P 500, so the market itself. Early October, completely takes a dump, right? Immediately begins to turn around on the date of December 26. Let's go look at Apple. Apple. Early October, completely takes a dump. Apple turns around. December. Amazon, October dumps, turns around December. Facebook, October dumps, turns around December. The last few days, right? When did our market start dropping here, guys? February 24th. What has Apple done since February 24th? Right. Move lower. What has Facebook done? What has Netflix and NVIDIA and Amazon and Google and so on and so on? At the end of the day, my man, the reason you know we focus on Amazon, Apple, Facebook, Google, right? Just a few of these big core names is that that's where the big money is going. Right? No, look at the queues, for example, guys. You know, the spy in the queues is just a basket of stocks. You know, so when you put a thousand dollars into the queues, the way it really works is you know, you're getting some Apple, you're getting some Amazon. And Apple and Amazon alone are like 15 to 20 percent of the QQQ. So ultimately, guys, it's those names that are gonna follow the overall market. Everywhere that it goes, on every up move, on every rebound, on every breakdown, as we know, right, those are the names that follow the market. So ultimately, man, right, here's one more example I'll give you. 
the reason you don't got to focus on too many names is that, you know, they're going to follow this market here. So check this out, right? Here was big time support for the market. Right? And when the market broke this support on say the 25th, right? pick any name out of a hat. Doesn't matter. You go short anything on the 25th, you are making money, right? Any of those big names, Amazon, you go short 25th, you're making money. You short Apple on the 25th, you are making money, right? Everything when it comes to this small little group of these big market leaders, it follows the indexes. So ultimately, man, you know, what I've come to learn is that, you know, when you get a perfect, say, bounce opportunity in Apple and the trade works, the same exact trade probably worked in Amazon and it would have worked in Netflix, right? Just like that big drop there on the 25th. You could have gone short any of those names and you're making money. So you know, that's what I would suggest, man, is, you know, rather than a big watch list, just a few of these names, because ultimately it's the same move, right? If we guys, if we come down and we, if the spy say on Monday, right, we gap open and then we kind of just roll over and we test the lows, well, Apple's going to do the same thing in Netflix, NVIDIA, so on and so on. All right, Mike. Uh, single stocks. Not a, and for all the reasons I just said, Mike, right? Not a bad environment to, you know, shift most of the focus onto the spy. Reason being is that, you know, we saw even yesterday, guys, for example, the individual stocks might give you a little flash of some sort of move for 5, 10, 15 minutes. But if the overall market, the SPY ultimately doesn't, you know, support it, isn't behind it, the trade ain't going to work. So especially, you know, in a news-driven environment, not a bad time to be focusing, you know, on the index itself. And that's what I'm having fun doing right now, which is, you know, like on Wednesday, like on yesterday, taking advantage of that premium decay on, you know, the same day expiration SPY. Um, for me, I do SPX just because of, you know, the fatter premiums. Adam and James questions, which ones do you specifically pick out? Um, right now, man, to be honest, and this is my opinion, right? Uh, you look at SPY, you can look at Apple, and then you can look at NVIDIA, right? SPY is most important, all said and done, right? It's the market itself. Apple is literally, you know, tied to the hip of the market almost on a minute to minute basis, right? So you look at a one minute chart of the SPY and the Apple, they're oftentimes mirror images. So Apple is your individual stock kind of, you know, way guys to trade the direction of the market. Amazon cost a fortune, Google cost a fortune. Apple's a bit cheaper and it's going to move with the market just the way things work. And then, you know, the semiconductor space is interesting right now because they are, you know, likely guys going to be impacted whether negatively or positively assuming the potential outcome or regarding the potential outcome of this whole situation here. Yeah. So you look at NVIDIA or you look at AMD, right? If AMD moves, NVIDIA is probably going to move. So right now, guys, it's one of those environments where, right, to look at Google and Facebook and Netflix and Amazon and Apple, right, and to try to, you know, pick out different trades and all of them, to me, it doesn't make much sense. It's all going to be the same move. Right. If Apple gives us a beautiful entry on Monday morning, dumping below a key level of support, right, guess what Amazon did that day? And guess what Facebook did, right? And Netflix did and what Google did. All they're gonna be the same move, right? I mean, think about it, guys. Is there a stock that didn't pop on Friday? Right? I don't know if we can find an exception. Apple pops. Facebook pops. Google pops, Amazon pops, Nvidia pops, AMD pops, right? We could even look at like some random shit. I mean, like Roku has been getting slammed. Even it pops there on Friday, right? Shop has been getting slammed big time. Even shop pops on Friday, right? Now think about it. We just looked at 10 different stocks that are all in different industries, all in different spaces all making the same exact move on Friday. 
And that's what I mean, guys. If you took a bounce set up off a five-minute chart in the last 30 minutes of the session on Apple Friday, it wasn't so much an Apple thing, right? Because there wasn't good news at a shop. You know, a shop didn't get upgraded. Uh, you know, Facebook didn't come out with some positive statement. You know, Amazon didn't, you know, revise forward guidance. Why did everything make the same exact move, though? Because Big Mama did. Simple as that. So ultimately, guys, right, these individual stocks, we're playing them in the direction of the market. 